Hi everyone, this is uh, the last uh, recording uh, for this uh, week and um, in uh, well, this uh, mini lecture we're going to uh, discuss uh, a specific solution technique for, um, uh, for Bayesian games, which is as you can see here called iterated deletion of dominated strategies. Um, so in contrast to uh, the previous two applications, uh, who that mainly um, were concerned with, you could say, applications in uh, economics. And so signaling games uh, play a big role in, uh, for example, job market uh, signaling models. And auction design, of course, uh, is uh, used quite heavily. Um, but this is simply um, a specific technique to identify Bayesian Nash equilibria for certain types of games. It's certainly not applicable to any Bayesian game. Um, so it needs to have a certain information structure that allows you to use this uh, technique. But we assume that uh, we have uh, such an information structure and I'm going to explain to you how you can then use this technique to identify uh, the Bayesian Nash equilibrium in such a game. Um, one more remark, by the way, um, it's called iterate deletion of dominated strategies. That is a little bit um, inaccurate in the sense that it should say iterated deletion of strictly dominated strategies. Um, but we uh, usually don't use that very heavy handed uh, uh, phrase. So, uh, and it's also referred to as IDDS. Okay. So what kind of game are we talking about? So uh, I'm going to give you one example. Um, hopefully the example will then um, give you an idea of uh, when you can uh, use this. So it's definitely not a very well defined class of games where you can use it. But uh, I think if you see the example, you understand the kind of context where you could try to, to use this. Um, so the example has uh, two players. And both players have a type set and an action set. So player one has uh, four types, and the types are called 24, 28, 32, and 36, for reasons that will become apparent uh, in a moment. And he has uh, two actions, U or D, and that stands for up or down. Player two also has uh, four types called A, B, C, and D. And he has an action set L and R, which is short for left and right. And uh, we have two payoff tables that are given here. So as you can see, the players are playing a uh, two by two uh, pie matrix uh, game, you could say. So uh, the payoffs over here are uh, in the matrix A are the payoffs for uh, player one. So if player one chooses U and player two chooses L, then the payoff to player one is 34. And as you can see, the same for player two in the matrix B. And um, yeah, maybe you already noticed that most of the payoffs are not depending on types, uh, only when player one is playing D. Uh, then he guarantees himself a payoff of T1. So that then depends on his type. If his type is uh, 24 and he plays D, then he gets 24. If his type is 32 and he plays D, he gets 32. So it's a kind of a, a certain payoff. Uh, the same, by the way, for um, player two, if he plays the right column, he gets 24 no matter what. So both players have a uh, secure strategy, you could say, and the other one is risky with a payoff of either 34 or zero. Okay, um, so that is that. So you can see that uh, in this story, actually only the types of player one player role. So you may wonder what then are the types of uh, player two for. Well, the types of player two 
determine the information structure together with types of player one. And uh, that works as follows. So here are the types of player one, and here are the types of player two in the column. And the prior is given by these uh, numbers in the matrix that you see there. So P and Q are uh, numbers as well. Um, they are larger than zero and four times P plus three times Q is equal to one, which um, means that this table over here is in fact a probability distribution. So you see there are four P's on the diagonal and three Q's on the lower diagonal. And together that adds up to one. So we have a probability distribution. So this table is the prior uh, over type profiles of type pairs in this case. So here's an example, for example, 32 and D um, that is stated over here, right? So over here, this is uh, 32 and D and uh, the uh, probability that that realization of uh, types uh, occurs is given by Q. That's how you read this. Okay, so, um, and this uh, completely determines the game. So we have payoffs and uh, we have a prior. So this is a Bayesian game and we have actions. Uh, and, uh, and so this is a Bayesian game and you um, might want to identify Bayesian Nash equilibria for this specific game. And we're going to show that this game has a unique BNE by using this um, technique of iterated deletion of dominated strategies. And what does that technique have to do with uh, identifying a BNE? Well, uh, one of the properties of a Nash equilibrium is that it never uses strictly dominated strategies. If you have a strategy that is strictly dominated by something else, meaning that no matter what you do, um, the dominated strategy always gives you a strictly lower payoff than uh, some other strategy, then your Nash equilibrium is not going to use a strictly dominated uh, that strategy because of a strict domination. You can always do better do the other strategy that strictly dominates it. And um, so that means that if you have a strictly dominated strategy somewhere, then you can uh, safely assume that the BNE is not going to use it. So you might as well remove it from the game. And that principle you can iterate. And if you're lucky, um, then by doing that iteratedly, you only have one uh, option left in the end. So that then must be the Bayesian Nash equilibrium. So that's what the technique that we're going to use. Okay, so how does it work in this uh, specific example? Here is uh, the gaming, at least the payoffs uh, for the game again. And what you uh, should observe here is that as soon as type one is smaller than, is not 36, so 32 or 28 or uh, uh, 24, um, then both players would rather have UL uh, above all other outcomes. They both prefer that, right? So if T1 is uh, smaller than uh, 32 or smaller, then of course you would rather have 34. And of course here in the matrix B, the 34 is already higher than any other payoff. So for any type other than T1, so other than 36, both players strictly prefer the outcome UL over any other outcome. However, what we are going to show is that if Q happens to be between 5 divided by 63 and 3 divided by 14. Um, then the game has a unique Bayesian Nash equilibrium. And in that Nash equilibrium, UL is never chosen. Even worse, uh, U is never chosen and L is never chosen. So the only thing the players do is play their secure strategies, D and R. So then we end up uh, in uh, 
in uh, this cell over here, D and R. And that means that the payoffs will be 24 for um, player two. And uh, yeah, T1 depending on the type for uh, player one. So that is good if uh, T1 is 36 for him, of course. But if it's uh, 32 or 28 or 24, then that is actually worse than when you would get the 34. Okay, so let's see how we get there. So maybe the first thing to realize is what is now a strategy in this game for player one and player two? Well, remember that a strategy in a game um, is a function that assigns to each type an action. So the types of player one were 24, 28, 32, and 36. And uh, A1 is up or down. So what's now a strategy? A strategy for player one is a function that says, well, if the type is 24, then I take this strategy. If it's 28, then I take that strategy. If it's 32, I take this strategy. And if it's 36, I take that strategy. So for each of these four possible types, you have to say whether you're going to play up or down. That's a strategy. So in total, you will have uh, well, two times two, times two, times two, uh, which is 16 strategies. And uh, the same for player two. He has A, B, C, and D, so also four types. And for each type, two possible actions that you could take. So that's also going to have two times two times two times two is also 16. possible strategies. And the claim is that the only Bayesian-Neshek equilibrium is this one. So the strategy S1 for player one, where he only chooses D, and S2 for player two, where he only chooses R. In all cases, right? So for every type, this is what you do. And as you can see, that means that you always have this payoff in the, uh, what is it, the, the right, the lower right corner of the, of the by matrix, uh, of the payoff matrices. And uh, yeah, the technique IDDS is what we're going to use to actually verify this claim. Okay, so here's the game in a nutshell, at least all the information that is relevant for us. And we're going to do an analysis. And the analysis now is going to actually, or maybe I just, um, indicate it is going to, you could say, cascade through this um, diagram. So I think the, the crucial thing here is that the information structure um, has this kind of, structure to it, meaning that uh, in every step, in some sense, uh, there's only two possible types of your opponent that you deem possible, and they cascade from one to the other one. So what we are going to do is we're going to uh, start over here for player one, and we know what he's going to do here. So then we know what this type will do. The next thing we do is then use that to solve the question, what will player two do when he's of type D? Next, we're going to do this one. And so information on 
what this person or what this type here does gives me then um, the opportunity to decide what this type will do, etc. So then we're going to look at C and then 28 and then B and then 24 and then A. And then we are done. So that's what we're going to do. We have to make eight steps in our analysis, eight iterations, you could say. So, um, step one is the 36. Then we are facing this game. At least player one is facing this game. And uh, yeah, so what will he do? Uh, well, if he chooses D, he gets 36. And if he chooses U, he gets uh, 34 or zero. So it is clear that D strictly dominates U. And that means that in his strategy, so remember that the strategy for player one uh, was deciding for each of his types Uh, what to choose so here he can choose up or down here he can choose up or down here he chooses up or down and here he chooses up or down and what we're saying now is that well that in uh, this case over here when we are at 36 that he will not choose up so that means that we have eliminated eight of his 16 possible strategies and there are eight strategies that use U for type 36 and eight of them that use D for type 36 and only the eight that use D are possible candidates for a B and E. That's what we see now. The other eight are deleted. That's where the name iterated deletion comes from. And so S1 is of this form, and that means that we already eliminated eight out of 16 possible candidates for a BE &E strategy. Okay. End of step one. Step two. Um, we now know that this type here is going to play D, right? So uh, type 36. It's going to play D. And that means that this type over here, so uh, what is the situation for the type D of player two? Well, he knows that he's only facing either type 32 or type 36. Well, we do know, not know yet what uh, 32 is going to do, but we do know that 36 is going to play D and that's going to help us to decide what player two will do then in case he is of type D. Um, well, one thing is, of course, that if he plays R, then he gets 24. And the question is, what happens if he plays L? And that's what we're going to compute. The expected payoff is denoted by this. So type D and uh, action L. Um, maybe yeah so initially yeah, so this is the information that we have now and initially this had probability q and this has probability p um, in the prior but now you're interested in the conditional probabilities so now you know that you are of type um, d Right, so it's over here. And uh, the question is, what are you going to... Uh... Um, the question is, uh, what are now the conditional probabilities? That's what I wanted to say. Uh, 
So, and uh, yeah, that is uh, this, right? So the total probability is P plus Q. So the conditional probability for the type to be of, uh, so type one to be 36, given that type two is D, T2 is D, is P divided by P plus Q. And also probability P that the type is 36 and Q that the type is 32 of your opponent. So the conditional probability using base rule is the probability of uh, A and B divided by a probability of B. And that gives you this. This is just base rule. I hope that everybody sees that. And otherwise ask your tutor to explain it in the next tutorial. And in the same way, the conditional probability for player one to be of type T1 is 32. Given that player two is of type D, is Q divided by P plus Q. So what is now the conditional condition? What is now the payoff? Right, you want to compute the expected payoff of player two being of type D, and if he plays L. Um, well, I don't know exactly. Um, but what I do know is that um, you either have with probability P divided by P plus Q, you are facing type 36. And you know that type 36 is going to play D. So if you play L, then at least with this probability over here, you get zero. Right. What happens in the other case? Well, I don't know yet. I don't know what type 32 is going to do. But I do know that uh, whatever happens, it's going to give me a payoff of at most 34. It's either zero or 34. So I don't know what the other one is going to do and which strategy he's going to choose over here. But at best, he will always choose you, in which case the payoff is 34. And if he does something else, only going to be less. So at best, it's this. Um, yeah. And uh, so if I choose R, I get uh, 24. So it's better to choose R over L um, if uh, 24 is more than well, whatever is stated over here. If 24 is more than this maximum on the expected payoff, if you choose L. So that is what is stated over here as well. And uh, yeah, so if you compute that and you use the fact that four times P plus three times Q is equal to one, then you will see that this means that Q should be at most three divided by 14. So if three is less than three divided by 14, player two being of type D chooses R rather than L. And so also there you can eliminate eight out of 16 uh, strategies, namely the ones that um, play uh, L when player two is of type D. And that's stated here. There are 16 strategies in total and the ones that have an L for type D are all uh, out of the picture now, at least if Q is smaller than this three divided by 14. Good, so, and uh, yeah, and now we can uh, go on uh, like that. You can do the calculations yourself, um, but uh, you will see that indeed, if you do that, um, you end up with the conclusion that the DDDD 
together with RRRR is the only Bayesian Nash equilibrium for any Q between 5 over 63 and 3 over 14. This one here is the one that you need to, um, to conclude all those things. So that's actually the 3 over 14 doesn't change because the payoff matrix for player 2 um, is constant, does not depend on the types. So here you have to do a bit of calculation uh, for each of them. So that is uh, to guarantee uh, all these. And I think the first one was uh, over here, you needed that uh, Q was uh, larger than, if I remember correctly, I think it's like this. But if you go on, then uh, you will see that uh, for the next one here, you need to have this. Uh, maybe it should be 60, is it 67? Something like that. So at least this is going to increase. And then if it's 24, you need a five out of 63. So that's basically what happens. I don't know exactly which numbers come here, but uh, you can compute that yourself. At least it's increasing. And in some sense, the only one that you really need to compute is the last one. Okay, um, so that's how it works. Like I said, it's a fairly uh, specific procedure that you can, uh, of course, only apply if uh, the information uh, structure allows you to do so. But at least this idea that you can uh, eliminate strictly dominated strategies, that is a principle that you can always apply. Um, the only question is if you, are, and you can always iterate it. Uh, the only question is, does it pin down one single strategy? Um, that may not uh, always happen, but for these type of cascading information structure, that uh, that this works very well. So good luck with applying it, and uh, see you uh, either in the next tutorial or uh, next week in um, the next recording. <laughs>